people look at me and they're like, are you done? Oh, baby, we are just getting like, started. Sometimes I go on LinkedIn and look at jobs. I'm like, this could be easier. <laughs> Who's done that? Who? Yeah, I mean, we all fantasize about like going back into the working world. I want to give a little love to the before me. One year ago, she was sitting right there in that spot. And I fired off an email and said, no, really, I'm done. You have to accept people for where they're willing to meet you. Accept it and be like, I love you here, but I'm gonna go there and not have that expectation for anyone else. Listen to your body, to your body's wisdom, no matter what the numbers look like. I gave myself permission to stand up fully for myself. Woo wee, it's a trip. It's just so incredible to watch women that you see that light in, see it in themselves and go for it. Okay, this is, this is the part where I always cry because I just look at you all and I'm just like, you inspire me. Like, this is, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it's just so incredible to watch women that you see that light in, see it in themselves and go for it. Ugh. Okay, I want you to meet all of them. <laughs> so I'm gonna start on this side with Patricia. My cousin. <laughs> Hi, you heard Prima. it. Also, I have adopted Aunt Cheryl. Where are you, Cheryl? <laughs> she's, now, she's now my auntie, too. I have a lot, of, a lot of new family members. So I'll never forget your first powerhouse before you were on stage. It only took one event where her and Priscilla were just the girls on stage dancing at the break. And I was like, who are they? And how do I not know them? We will be friends. <laughs> And just to watch you, I mean, you've always been an incredible performer, but to watch you step into your purpose. I always love to ask the question this way because it changes year to year, but who do you want to introduce yourself to us right now in this moment as? Mm. As maybe less of a person, but more of a feeling, like a safe, a safe person, a safe space. As your sister, um, whether you felt heard or unheard growing up or today or tomorrow, I am really hoping to just represent someone who listens. And that's kind of it. And we got to hear a little bit about all the amazing work that she's done. I'm like, don't skip this part. Oops. Healing artist, new Lululemon ambassador. Yeah. And her, we finally got her to make her program Moon and Waves available virtually because her... I've been to the class here in Phoenix and it is so transformational and so powerful that I cannot wait for more people to get to experience it. Mm, thank you. Can I give it a shout out? Um, this incredible woman, woman Marilu, where are you? She came up to me last night and she was like, your Moon and Ways online class transformed me. I was open and I found my, my lover and I was like rubbing, literally rubbing her body. Like, can I get some of that? <laughs> <laughs> but it was um, the practice of remaining open and really tapping into your divine feminine and listening to those cues and the needs and the wants to be with a partner, to be with yourself, to be successful at business or life or whatever it is. It was really, um, I'm so grateful that she was able to experience that because that's what this method is about. It's really about coming into your body and maybe leaving some of those critical or super logical thoughts that live in your mind and to take a moment to just be aware. Like, as I mentioned, I really just want to hold space and part of my embodiment practice is being able to be so present in your body. I always like to say it's about being the witness rather than the judge. The witness is here in your heart. It's your best friend that always wants to love and take care of you. But a lot of us live in this judgment kind of state of life where we're constantly yapping at ourselves. And I know that the truest part of you loves you the most. The truest part of you would never be as mean to you as your mind is. So thank you for sharing that with me last night. That was awesome. That's so mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. So Ashley, Ashley has some fans here. Okay. <laughs> we need those friends. Need those yeah. Friends. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget 
you in the audience last year, but it was really when you and I got to connect on that one-on-one -on -one call. Mm -hmm. As part of Six Figure School, we do this contest where we challenge people to surprise themselves in the first 30 days. And you were one of the winners of that contest, and we really got to connect heart to heart. And I just was blown away, number one, by your story, because I didn't know what was going on in your life when you were sitting in the seats last year. Mm -hmm. But to watch what has unfolded since then and the way you are stepping up to represent women who feel underrepresented, mm -hmm. who do you want to introduce yourself as today? I'm going to change it up. This is the first time I've introduced myself like this, but I am Ashley. Um, I'm also a mom of two. Why am I crying already? Oh my god. Um, I always joke like a wife of one. Um, <laughs> That's important nowadays. <laughs> Just okay. never know. Um, and I am also excited to say that I'm a founder of a community for Asian female entrepreneurs called Gals Against the Grain. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, we'll get, oh yeah, there's so much more I want to ask you, but I forgot. That's my second question. I'm coming back. Shauna, actually this, this side of the room is my Midwest contingent. <laughs> Where are my Midwest girls at? Wow. There's a lot of us now, I love it. Um, Shauna came into my life in 2020, like really around the time when powerhouse, when, when the pandemic hit and we were in like an events-based business, I was like, well, all I know is I want to make sure people feel connected. So we hosted these free Zoom calls for twice a week for six months just to connect and to stay in community. And I remember my little sister one day said, hey, my friend Shauna's new in Phoenix. She's looking to get connected. I was like, great, send her over. And I, I don't even remember how the first DM conversation went, but the moment I got to experience your power, not even knowing what you were going through in life at that point, it was that moment where I was like, I don't, I don't know anything about her and I don't need to other than this is someone who's going places, who's going big places. And same with you, getting to watch you come up through Six Figure School, attend the Expanders Retreat, really just step into your own. It's been such an incredible thing to watch. So who do you want to introduce yourself as today? I want to introduce myself as iconic. Wait, a little bit louder. I don't know that they heard you in the back row. Um, I said I wanted to introduce myself as iconic. As well you should. It was my word at Expanders that came yeah. through and I was like, ooh, I like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my word of the year. So doing something like this to me is so effing scary, um, but it's iconic. <laughs> Um, but if I was saying this last year, I would just introduce myself as Shauna. I'm a hairstylist. But now, with this year, I know I'm more than just what I do. Yeah. Um, I'm also a mom. And I, see, now you got me. It's like, oh, because you're away from them. And then you're like, damn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I swear a lot, too. But I... <laughs> We're not apologizing for that anymore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I... I own a hair salon, um, and I work my ass off, and I'm a mom of an almost two-year-old, and I'm getting married in two months, so. <laughs> Not busy at all. No. Thanks for fitting us in your schedule. I'm here. <laughs> and just like someone who I've watched expand, that's like the word. So, so cool. So cool to watch. My other Midwest contingent. This is our Minnesota contingent. Wisconsin, Min Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Minnesota. <laughs> so what's so cool about this journey is when relationships come back into my life after, I mean, really, I just feel like I'm so far removed from that version of myself. But Bree and I actually went to college together. <laughs> we had like a couple classes. We weren't even really close. And it was last year in the spring before we did a, a different program that you slid into my DMs and just shared where you were at in life. And you, what I remember is being at that point, that precipice of just knowing there was so much more for you and so ready to step into it. <laughs> you also, we're gonna come back to like everyone's story because there's been some incredible transformations, but who do you introduce yourself as now? I wanna give a little love to the before me uh, because yeah. one year ago she was sitting right there yeah. And what was so present for me was how I felt so brave 
because I had given notice at the law firm I co-founded, and it was time for me to exit that firm for a lot of reasons. And so I felt brave, but I felt so afraid. And I sat in that chair, and I heard Ronnie Brown say, you need to protect your peace at all costs. And I sat there in that spot, and I fired off an email and said, no, really, I'm done. And so I want to introduce myself as someone who has stepped into what I know I'm meant to do. I founded a company called Executive Unschool, and I bring all of those beautiful regulation practices that we've been doing throughout this event, the breathing, the closing our eyes. I bring those into the workplace because as an attorney, I was part of a cycle of not actually solving the problems that were happening in the workplace, and I said, I can do better. Uh, and I also work with individuals and heal work wounds because a lot of us choose the entrepreneurial route because we've been through something. That can be something as simple as a riff, which feels super rupturing. It can be all sorts of other things, and I've had my own work ruptures. Uh, and so I help individuals and leaders heal those wounds so you're not bringing that baggage along. So needed, right? So needed. So I hand tap for you over there. Just want to make sure you didn't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I want to, I, I curated a question for each of them really based around the work that they're doing in the world because there's so much. Again, I, I love doing this work because I get to see all of these businesses come to life that are so needed, but that's not my gift. And when I first took a class with Patty and Priscilla, I was really sure that that wasn't my gift, but I'm so glad that someone else has those hips and the gift to really unleash our femininity. And when I'm in a class with you or in just even on stage and watching you in your element, you unlock something in women that for me, I'll speak for myself, I didn't know that I wasn't in tune with that. So the work you do really is in this world of embodiment. And that was, that was kind of a brand new word to me if I'm being honest, a couple of years ago, I, I could probably spell it but I didn't really understand it because I wasn't embodying it. But I'd love if you would speak to what is embodiment and why is it important for those of us who are bringing big ideas to the world? Mm -hmm. So embodiment truly is being so connected and aware to the sensations, the emotions, Things like, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm lonely, I'm happy, I'm sad, to the spiritual shivers that we get, to the gut intu intuition. It's those little signals, understanding and being aware of that, all of that is embodiment. What it truly, truly means is being so present that all that information that your body is communicating to you, it just makes sense. And I think you are such a beautiful representation of embodiment because when you get a good idea, the first thing you say is, oh, I got chills. Does anyone get chills? <laughs> it's that, right? Yeah. And sometimes those chills are like, oh, this is a great idea. And sometimes those chills are like, oh, this is something scary that I need to maybe step away from. And so we experience those chills, but embodiment truly means that you know what that means, right? For me, um, embodiment is like an everyday practice. When we were standing back there, I can feel my heart beating really quickly. And a lot of times when those physiological things happen, we start to label ourselves like, oh, I'm so anxious, I'm so nervous, it's gonna be bad. What I notice is like, okay, well, my heart is beating really fast. What does that mean? I'm so excited to be here. I'm still nervous. And so what I did, I started humming to myself. Right, just as much as breathing and meditation and yoga does um, help soothe our nervous system, humming is so beautifully. There's a baby in here. I'm sure we hum to our children all the time. I don't have kids. I have Priscilla's kids. My bad. I don't, <laughs> um, I'm trying to relate here. Um, but so <laughs> embodiment was that moment of just being able to be present and to hold space for myself. Again, to not be the judge, to just be so present with myself and give myself what I need. And so when it comes to having these really big ideas, mm -hmm. embodiment really helps you to discern what is for me and what is not. All of these numbers on this contract look amazing and it feels really exciting. I'm like, oh, but something just 
feels off. And it doesn't mean that it's a hell no. Maybe it's, I'm going to sleep on it. I'm not going to allow this people, this situation to pressure me into making a decision right now. I'm going to sleep on it because that's what my body is telling me. But the beautiful thing about embodiment and intuition is that we, all of us, receive intuition so differently. So some of us are super visual, whether, you know, I have friends who like, you're pink and you're purple and you're green. And there's like, aura, right? Some people hear their intuition. Some people get those shivers or that gut feeling. Some people taste things or smell things because we are sensitive. And for so long, we've been bullied. Anyone for being sensitive, Mm -hmm. right? I will never forget. I was seven years old and my sister and my cousin (laughs) were mean to me. And I was like, you hurt my feelings. They laughed for like an hour. No lie. They still bring it up to this day. And that's when I knew it was like, Oh, the things that I'm feeling, maybe I should hide these things because I'm too much, Mm. right? I'm too expressive. I'm too this. And the whole time I was just speaking out loud for what my body was experiencing. I didn't notice that. Mm. I didn't realize that back then. And embodiment has helped me to be so present and to move with flow. So much of the masculine is that A, B, C, D, this is how you do it. This is how you get it done. Keep going and don't stop. And the feminine is like, we're chilling. We're good. We're going to nurture ourselves, whether you are a mother or not. I believe that I'm my own baby and my own child. And I love that. I love that I was able to build that feminine uh, relationship with myself because femininity isn't always jewelry and heels. It's so much about being kind to yourself, being that mother, that sister, that feminine energy. And so I think it's so important to listen to your body, to your body's wisdom, no matter what the numbers look like or the spreadsheets or the logical stuff, that you take a moment to just be so present that it feels safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that feeling of safety, right? That's, I mean, ultimately what I realized I was looking for. And I'm in this season where because of working with people like you, because of doing this inner work, realizing that I don't actually have to spend that much energy explaining myself. I don't have to spend any energy explaining. If I just know it's a no, (laughs) <laughs> it's a no. And one of the places that's been really helpful for me, because I am from the Midwest, and there is really this cultural conditioning of niceness. And we are very nice. And we also learn to sometimes not have boundaries, because we don't want to be perceived as not nice. Oh, there's all my Midwest girls. <laughs> there they are. And I'm going to come to Shauna next, because I feel like we've been able to really connect over this shared experience of, you know, I know that like my heart and the way that I do genuinely welcome people, that's real, that's not bullshit, is what, it's my superpower. And then learning how to also have it be a superpower when I get a no or when I get a like, I'm gonna love that person, but like from here. And realize that's not me being nasty, that's me just having boundaries. So we've had a lot of conversations just about the brutal journey of outgrowing people as you grow. And you've, in so many seasons, you've been asking me, like, well, what would your advice be? Or what, what? But I, I wanted to turn the question to you because I know you've had such an experience with this, a personal experience. So if there's anyone in here really struggling right now with knowing that you're outgrowing some relationships and not knowing how to navigate that, anyone? Okay. So I would really love to hear, what have you learned from your personal experience with this and stepping into who you're meant to be? So there's a lot of Midwest girls in here, right? Okay, so the perfect way to describe this for me is in the Midwest, there's this new trend that everyone's quitting their job to make sourdough bread. All right? And I love, I love sourdough bread. I bread. love the bread. <laughs> However, I don't want to make the bread. So anyone else feel that? <laughs> and if you make the bread, like I will buy your bread. We want to support you. Um, however, what I, where I'm going with this is when you're in an environment that is so turned to one certain way, and when you decide that like that's awesome for you, but like not for me, people look at you differently. And I can't tell you how much I felt an outsider, especially at home with my family. There was one time, and I've been doing a lot of of deep work on myself this whole past year. My coach is in the room, if anyone wants her name. There she is. (laughs) 
Um, but when my sister was getting married, I was probably 28 years old, and I just got out of a really toxic relationship. And that's when I kind of was leaning towards the powerhouse women group. Um, it was right after COVID, and my dad went to my mom, and he said, when do you think Shauna is going to get her shit together because she's not married? Mm. And my mom was like, I'm not really sure what you mean. I had a business by coastal in Arizona and a six-figure plus business in Wisconsin at the same time. So I was more frustrated at that than anything because I was like, I'm living my dream. I didn't settle for a relationship because I stood up for myself and who I am. Yeah. But I will say what comes with that, as strong and as hard as it was to stand up for myself, it was even harder not living up to the expectation of your parents' idea of what they think you should be. Mm -hmm. But I'm standing here today like I said, I'm getting married in two months and I have a daughter and I didn't settle for that relationship. And I came out to Arizona to do my job out here to find myself and that's what I did. And I just think now, I hope my dad watches this, we're all good, everything's great, yeah. but just standing in front of a lot of women and being able to share how hard that was for me when no one else understood me or that mm -hmm. was the power of the moment. Mm -hmm. So the one, thank you. The one thing I will say through my healing journey this year was it was lonely. We connected on that. Mm -hmm. I isolated myself a lot this year because I felt very aggravated when someone would trigger me. I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna lose myself right here. <laughs> I thought I left that person, but she's right there. Yeah. So I just stayed home. Maybe I could have made the bread. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I didn't. Um, anyway, so through that whole journey, it was so hard. But now that I'm out, of that and it's an ever going thing for me. It never stops. But when you hit a new level of yourself, you can only face yourself to the level in which you're willing to look at yourself in the face and say, I need to change or I need to do the work on myself. And since doing that, my business has grown exponentially and it still is. But every time I hit that new level, I'm like, okay, where am I going next? What am I doing? I don't know. People look at me and they're like, are you done? I'm like, just like, oh baby, we are just like, getting started. Are you happy, and I'm like, oh, I'm happy. I'm great. Like, I'm good. Yeah. But I just think it goes to show that sometimes when you leave different relationships, the hardest part for me was I thought I could take everyone with me, and I needed to realize that sometimes you have to accept people for where they're willing to meet you, and if they don't meet you there accept it and be like, I love you here, but I'm gonna go there and not have that expectation for anyone else. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Because it is, right? It's usually the expectation that's the source of my suffering. Mm -hmm. That's so well said. Okay, I wanna come to Ashley because you also had this moment, I mean, you had a moment about a month before the Powerhouse event, but a lot of change when you were in the seat last year. Not that there's not more change now, but I, you had shared when we were on the call kind of planning this panel, there's so much you shared just about your journey going from the corporate world, being happy there, to now being an entrepreneur, creating what you're creating. And there's this beautiful transition that happens when we go from the corporate world to entrepreneurship. Not everyone even wants to do that, and that's beautiful, but when we do, it brings a certain level of change that no one really knows how to prepare us for. So what have you learned from that journey? Maybe tell us what happened, Powerhouse last year, where you were, and then what have you learned from the journey of really completely transforming your identity into the entrepreneur that's sitting here today? Yeah, so I was a ride or die corporate gal. Um, I did the traditional route, I got my bachelor's, I got my master's, I have a a pretty lengthy background in HR and recruiting, and I was happy and I was content, um, but I always knew in my gut that there was something more for me, and I didn't know what that was, but I also didn't have time to explore that because I had a good paying job, so why would I? Yeah. Um, 
And then a month before Powerhouse, I got laid off. And I came across the Instagram for Powerhouse. I didn't know what it was, but it looked like they were having a good time. I had some, <laughs> I had some friends that were entrepreneurs. They heard about it. We went. Um, and it was that moment where I was like, okay, I'm going to go all in on my business. Yeah. And where are you now? Because you, I mean, you can share as much as you want, but you're like about to hit kind of a cool milestone if you didn't already. Yeah. Um, so this... I mean, it's been just like a crazy, crazy journey of, I mean, when you leave corporate into entrepreneurship or anything that is safe or content for you or mm -hmm. stability, but you're also excited for something new. It's just weird parallel of grieving your old identity and your past, but also being really excited and know that you can do something else. And so it was a weird balance and roller coaster of navigating both of those feelings. I mean, up until now, it's something that I still... Mm -hmm you know, can get triggered about or think about often. Sometimes I go on LinkedIn and look at jobs. I'm like, this could be easier. Um, <laughs> Who's done that? Who, yeah, I mean, we all fantasize about like going back into the working world. Um, I just clock out. <laughs> but again, I knew there was something more. And just as a mom, I also just wanted to prove to my kids that they, they can do something different than what they've been told. They can do scary, they can do, fa they can fail. I want them to fail. I want yeah. them to make mistakes. I think for so long in my corporate career, I did everything and hustled so long to just be perfect. And mm -hmm. so when you go into entrepreneurship, it's a whiplash. Because <laughs> I mean, I failed pretty quickly, quite often. Um, but this summer, I think I've just worked really hard in making connections and slowing down. Yeah. Um, I was very intentional about that. And with that, similar to what you said earlier, my business just kind of blossomed from there. And I'm hitting my biggest month this month. So I'm so um, Is that your question? Yeah. OK. <laughs> Sometimes I forget the question, but I just know it's going to lead us somewhere great. And yeah. it did. Some. Yeah. And I love how you shared about how the way you're operating in your business is very distinctly different than how you were operating in the identity of when you were working in corporate. And I think, you know, we all kind of, I think a lot of entrepreneurs go through this swing where, you know, there's that, the reason we're drawn to entrepreneurship is we're driven to create something. We are driven women. Like, n none of us in here are lazy. And the hardest lesson I've had to learn is that I gain more by doing less. And you have to really trust that and sit in the gap for much longer than you want and start to learn how to lean into your intuition and how to learn to follow the pings that are uniquely right for you. And that's where all of the success finds us. But then there's that weird in between, like when you're growing out bangs and you're not sure, is it a side part? Do we clip them back? Can we bring butterfly clips back? Because it's just awkward, the in-between, right? I can tell which one of you has grown out bangs and who hasn't. <laughs> Thank you. So Bree, you, you mentioned the moment sitting in the seats last year. Last year was your very first Powerhouse Women event, and you gave notice. It was like, I can hear it in your voice, what you said. It was like, that was the decision. Even if you had communicated you were leaving, it was like, that was the moment you were like, done, done, yeah. done, done, done. Mm -hmm. And when we were, we collected everyone's stories uh, from Six Figure School to, you know, pick who's going to be on the panel. And there was something so profound that you shared in your submission, this lesson you've learned about self-abandonment. And I really resonated with that because that's been such a big part of my journey this last year is looking at all the little nuanced ways that I had self-abandoned. And there's a lot of places in my life where I am in my power. And then there were a lot of places in my life where I gave it away freely. It was like, no, take it. Here, take it. So I want you to share from your perspective now, what have you learned about self-abandonment? And what do you hope other women will learn from hearing your story? I think it's, so the first thing I want to say about self-abandonment is we, the confronting part about this, we like to use this phrase, and we like to say we're people pleasers. Mm -hmm. And that's really the lipstick on the pig, because there's an enormous cost of, even on an occasional basis, really putting that hat on as a people pleaser. And I think it's so much more important to call a spade a spade, because you are abandoning yourself in those moments. Yeah. And that can look like abandoning your values, 
um, on a small scale, you know, when the kiddo comes up to me and I don't give them, my child, my full presence because I'm so into work. And I had 15 years of that, of really silencing any of my needs, my desires. If any of you have been asked, what do you really want? What do you desire? And you kind of have that blank stare feeling on the inside. It's likely because you've given so much of yourself to others and you're not giving as much to yourself. And so there's this cost of self-abandonment that I think is really important. And the second piece that I think is just as important is to recognize where that comes from. And for many of us, I'll just speak about my own family, my mom, my grandmother would never be sitting in a room like this. So the socialized norms that we've all experienced, we didn't see the women in our lives take a stand for their own desires. We didn't see the women stand up and say, I really want something and I'm gonna go for it. That wasn't my experience. My mother and my grandmother are wonderful humans and they wore self-sacrifice like a badge of honor. And so I think it's so important if you hear self-abandonment or maybe you like to say, yes, I'm a people pleaser. If that comes with shame, my encouragement to you is to set that down because it comes all from the conditioning and the socialized norms that we've experienced from the women in our own lives. And the third thing I want you to hear about self-abandonment is you have full autonomy to give yourself permission to do something different. Hmm. You no longer have to self-abandon. This is my permission to you. In the past two years, there have been little statements people have said, you've said one to me before, and I received that, I was like, that's my permission. And then I go, why? Did I need permission? I can give myself permission. Yeah. And so I guess that's what I want to offer is there's, that's what I did in that moment, hearing Ronnie Brown, I gave myself permission to stand up fully for myself and whoo wee, it's a trip. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of goodness on the other side of that. Did you find yourself confronted with again? Because I think it's one thing again when we're like, mm, I'm in my villain era. I'm going to set a boundary. Watch me. Uh, okay. And then you set the boundary and you get really comfortable. Or, you know, how has that evolved as you've stepped into that? Because I feel a very different energy from you now. So from that initial awareness to now, any, any other insights? that you can share. You're very intuitive, my friend. Thanks. So absolutely, I've had, you know, I re referenced some of these work experiences that I've had, and it has been a complete 180. So where I started was pointing the finger. It was their fault, their fault, their fault. Mm. And I had to turn that mirror right around myself and say, no, actually, it was the self-abandonment in those small moments where you didn't speak up. It was a self-abandonment when I didn't prioritize my values, my family, my loved ones in the way that I wanted. It wasn't that someone asked too much of me, it's that I didn't claim it for myself. And so that has been the biggest transformation is not looking so much external as the reason for why I experienced pain and the things that I've experienced, and instead say, I have a piece of this, which is a very empowering place to be because it means I can do something different about it. Yeah. Yeah, that deserves a round of applause because it also takes such massive courage. It's the most courageous and also the most freeing thing you can do is look in the mirror, not from a place of self-blame, because sometimes that's a conditioned response too. Let me look for where it's my fault, but it's, it's learning how to take responsibility for what's yours, leave the rest, because it's not, you can't take responsibility for someone else's behavior. But when you free yourself and you're willing to look at what you're most afraid to look at, it's one of my favorite quotes, I'm gonna butcher it, here we go. Joseph Campbell said, the magic you seek lies in the caves you're most afraid to enter. Right, those dark places that we're afraid what we're gonna find. Will there be bats? <laughs> Will there be a circus clown? We don't know. Someone waiting to give you a root canal? Trolls. Trolls? You never know. But then you realize that in the caves, in the places where you're most afraid to look, when you confront that fear, you're kind of unfuckable with. Yeah, yeah. That's the energy. My mom's probably proud with how much I've sworn today. <laughs> so 
We're sitting on this stage together because we got to have an experience, not all in the same six-figure school class, but it's really a family like you don't ever exit once you're a part of it. And you're so much better equipped to speak to who this is best, who it's for, what someone can expect. How did you know it was the right time to invest in yourself? Because I really want you all to hear this. As a mentor, and they would tell you the same thing, I want you to find the mentor that's right for you. I want you to find the program that's right for you. You don't actually have to invest money to get started. My first mentors were podcasts and free resources. But there's something that changes, just like how something might have changed for you the moment you said, yes, I'm gonna buy the ticket to be in that room, this room. Something changes when we make that kind of a decision. So I would love if each of you would maybe just speak to how did you know it was that time to make a decision, to invest in yourself? And if you were to put it in your own words, who is Six Figure School for? I'll start with Patty. Mm. Funny enough, this girl I've known for a long time, Priscilla. <laughs> when I first moved here, she was like, you should do a Six Figure School. Like you're doing this online. At that point I was, it was, you know, 2020, and I was doing a lot of online coaching, and although I knew I had a business, for some reason it felt unnatural to claim myself as a business owner and an entrepreneur, and Six Figure School really gave me the confidence to step into that power and that title and say, I am a businesswoman. I'm truly organizing these classes and these workshops, and I'm holding space for women, and if not for P, who was such an expander for me, I mean, the girl's a Gemini. She's always in the future. I'm like, I'm here. She's over there. It's amazing. <laughs> but... Um, she really expanded me. And although there were days where the breakout room would come and I was like, I don't have the capacity to talk to anybody. Sometimes I'd be in the breakout rooms and I always showed up just to listen to other people's questions. Because sometimes I felt so overwhelmed and I felt like I don't even know what to ask, but someone else does, right? We've all heard in school, like there's no such thing as a dumb question. And there really isn't. Just being in that space and listening to other people's passions and how they were also insecure, but also excited, it gave me really permission to feel normal, <laughs> it's such a safe and normal space. Everyone's business is important. And one of the cool things I got to experience in Six Figure School too was how passionate all these other women were in my same field, but also how unique everybody was. And I think for a long time, because I was outside of that space, I was like, well, how am I different? Everyone is literally doing the same thing that I am. But once you start to listen to other people's passions and the intricacies of their business, you start to really set yourself apart, but also feel like a part of the community. And so for me, I think, the person who is maybe should join Six Figure School invitation is someone who does feel a little bit isolated, who feels like I don't have anyone to talk to this about. You know, my parents aren't entrepreneur. I can't necessarily look towards them. Neither are my sisters, although they're successful in so many ways. I needed that. I needed expansion. I need to, I'm the type of person who kind of needs to see someone else do it before I can try it. Like, is it spicy? Can you just try it for me first? I don't know. I'm scared. Like, <laughs> right? You taste this. Is it bad? That is me. And so for me, it's having people who are expanders like P, who's like, girl, you have a business, just do it. Just sit there, just try. And I kept trying and trying again. And it's so beautiful that we have this lifetime access to it because every once in a while, I definitely dip my toe in six-figure school. When I'm trying to get more clear about my message or when I need a little push, I'm so grateful that it's always there. And that's what real support is, is that it's always there. No matter where you are, if it's day one or the end of your business and the beginning of a new one, it's always there for you to always come back and touch base with. So, yeah. yeah. I love that. Thank you. Uh, what about for you? You were in the seat, not an entrepreneur. Did you even have your idea for a business yet? I had an idea, seat? but even yeah. then, like during the day, people would ask me what, do I, what I would do and I would just like whisper it because <laughs> I wasn't sure. Um, I love that. What did you whisper? <laughs> I was, I don't even <laughs> I was like a career coach, like an HR person. I don't really know. Yeah, like just trying on different ones, like trying on outfits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was the second time I noticed something in my gut um, that I was like, okay, I'm just going to take the leap of faith, which is not like me if you know me because I'm pretty cheap. I had just been laid off from my corporate job. Mm -hmm. I was like, am I really going to do this? But I just knew it was the first time I felt like I didn't have to ask for permission. Yeah. For myself, to myself. I just did it. Um, yeah. And so I'm so glad I did. And it was just, I was talking to friends about this the other day. We would hear other six-figure alums talk about how they met some of their best friends through the program. And I'm like, 
I'm in, I'm like 34. I don't like I don't know if I need more friends. I don't know like what what to expect or are we actually going to be friends? But some of my biggest cheerleaders in the room are girls that I met in the program. Yeah. Uh, we shot each other DMs. We do more voice messages. We talk every day and. It's because of those genuine connections that I truly think my business has mm. is where it's at today because of them. So yeah, and you show up that way for everyone else. Yeah, it's I mean, so beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So I would say if you are thinking about taking a chance on yourself, you know it in your gut, you feel it. It's mm. the beginning of embodiment. I think that's what it's called. Mm. <laughs> but you just know, and I think it's for anyone who's really willing to take the chance on yourself. Yeah, I love that. So so beautifully said. What about for you? When, how did you know it was the right time to take the leap to invest in yourself? And then who would you say it's for? Well, I needed another write-off. I mean, that's a real thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, but it, but I also. Rather, yeah, I would way rather give my money to Lindsay any day than the government. <laughs> so we'll start there. However, I just <laughs> felt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Um, I just felt that six-figure school from everyone that I was talking to was just saying over time, this is such a solid like business school in general for anything that you need. And there was some parts of it I was like, I, I don't know what this pertains to me about because I don't have this type of job. However, it doesn't mean that five years down the road, I can't go and access it as a huge resource. I also love that it wasn't so specific to one industry, mm -hmm. um, just because a lot of the courses and things that I've done were so mm -hmm. specific that I can't, I couldn't twist it on anything else. But I was listening to Jamie Kern Lima's podcast the other day, and she was, it was with Ed Milet, and I was telling her this before. He made a comment in the podcast that said, one, and I'm gonna butcher this, but it said, the greatest form of neglect is when you see a woman not standing in her power. And for me, I knew it was time to invest because I had like a six month old at the time. And the worst thing I could do for myself was not showing up for her to look at me as an example someday. Yeah. And she has an amazing example to look at now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's so beautiful. Bree, what about for you? I would just say exactly what they've said. So spot on. And I would add my piece of it, which was it's for the woman who is almost afraid of the size of your ambition or your dreams. Mm. And that was me before community builders. Like I, I felt that, that there was more, but mm. no one in my life was showing me that. And in fact, was kind of pushing it down, like saying, chill out a little bit. And I needed people and women who were showing me that it's okay to have really big dreams and to go after them. And the 21 other women in community builders and so many countless women in six figure school showed me not only is it okay to have enormous ambition and big dreams, but go bigger. There's more out there for you. And I'm continually inspired every single day by that community. And I just got the email, do you want to do it again? I was like five minutes, yes, I want, I opting in for the next round also. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when we created it in the beginning, because I was a slow burn, you know, in my business. Again, I didn't just take off, skyrocket right to the top. I knew I wanted something that women could take it at their own pace, whether they were moms, whether they had the time to commit to it week after week. They knew it was always there because all of us are on a different journey. All of us are on a different pace. And what's so cool is, as you meet women today and as you hear that they're someone who's participated, you get to go through it if you're someone who joins as part of our fall round and you get to be in community with all of these women. Because the biggest thing, I think that the change that I feel happening within powerhouse women, the change within me is it's this departure from, you know, I ultimately don't see myself so much as a coach or as a mentor. I do that, that's part of what I do. But I believe that community, and honest conversations are the catalyst for change. Mm -hmm. So it's a 12 week experience that feels very much like this, just virtually, where we'll keep encouraging and lovingly pushing you to think bigger and giving you the roadmap to follow at whatever pace works for you. But I'll be honest with you, nothing in the modules is anything different than you can find on a podcast. 
I don't have any secrets. Anyone who tells you they have secrets, they don't. They probably just put a name on something that, you know, feels kind of proprietary, but there's really no secrets. And I just want you to get that because I want you to find the mentor, the community to grow with that's right for you. But for those that are looking to continue growing with powerhouse women, I'm going to thank these ladies and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how to do that. But can we just give this panel the biggest round of applause?